I'm the Rules Girl, and this is Zaya, Embers of a Forsaken Star, an expansion for Zaya, Legends of a Drift System. In Zaya, players are space captains, carving a name for themselves in the vast reaches of a star system. Players will explore the system and complete missions, while collecting resources and combating other players around the table. You win by being the first player to achieve the required number of fame points. This video will cover new concepts introduced in the expansion. If you haven't played the base game, you'll need to watch our previous video first. Zaya, Embers of a Forsaken Star, introduces these new mechanics and concepts to the game. 1. Events 2. New Exploration Tokens 3. The Economy Board 4. New Sectors 5. Ice Damage 6. New Mission Types and 7. Outfits and Mods Embers of a Forsaken Star replaces the original Fame Point track with a new one. The new Fame Point track adds pink event spaces. The first time any player reaches one of these spaces, an event card must be drawn and resolved from the event deck. Events add new and exciting scenarios to each game of Zaya, like wormholes, which allow players to travel between spawn points. Embers of a Forsaken Star replaces the original set of exploration tokens with a new set. Some of these tokens grant extra movement, cargo cubes, or might damage your ship. After you resolve an exploration token, keep it on your ship mat. When you have two exploration tokens, discard them for a fame point or 2000 credits. The economy board integrates a resource economy for players to create supply and demand. When players buy cubes from a planet, they must be taken from the economy board. But beware, your purchase is limited to the number of cubes available. When players sell cubes on a planet, the planet consumes each cube and produces a new cube of its production type for each cube sold. These new cubes are placed onto the economy board. Note that cubes sold at Loth don't produce any new cubes. If any resource section of the economy board is empty on a player's status phase, that resource is now in demand. Place 1000 credits onto that section of the economy board, if there aren't 1000 credits there already. The next player to sell cubes that produce the in-demand resource earns the 1000 bonus credits. Embers of a Forsaken Star adds new sectors and locations, including Dead Worlds, Near, The Kiln, Anomalies, Ice Asteroids, and more. When exploring and revealing a dead world, place the number of relic tokens face down onto the matching space. Players can take an excavate action to attempt to add the relics to their hold by rolling a d20 and following this chart. Relic tokens take up two cargo spaces in your hold and can be sifted at the kiln for fame points or other bonuses. The star near is always at the center of the system and embers of a forsaken star. The Kiln is a space station that orbits near. For one movement point, players can dock with the Kiln if they're adjacent to it. Move your ship onto the Kiln card and roll the d6 to move the Kiln along its orbit path. To leave the Kiln, spend one movement and place your ship adjacent to the Kiln. On your action phase while in the Kiln, you may take the Sift action to remove a relic token and choose one of its rewards. You may also sell Ember a new resource type, for 2000 credits each, gaining a fame point if you sell two or more. On your business phase in the kiln, you may take actions as if you were on a planet. Anomalies are sectors with concentrated gravity paths. If you move into a gravity path, pause your movement, roll the specified die, move your ship that many spaces along the path, then resume your movement. Once you've triggered gravity path movement, it won't trigger again until you enter the path from a space that's not on the path. If a path moves you into an unexplored sector, reveal the tile and accept the consequences. If you discover a sector with a comet path, place a comet onto the specified location. If you move into the comet's path, pause your movement, roll a d6 and move the comet that many spaces on the path, then resume your movement. If the comet ends its movement on a space of a ship or a cube, the ship or cube is immediately destroyed. Once you've triggered the comet's movement, it won't trigger again until you enter the path from a space that's not on the path. Note that if the comet passes over your ship, 
Your ship is safe. Ice damage is similar to regular damage, but can melt or freeze over time. When receiving ice damage, place it into your hold like normal. During your business phase, you may repair ice damage for free. But beware, if you don't repair it immediately, the ice spreads during your status phase. Add one ice damage to every orthogonally adjacent space to any pre-existing ice damage. If your ship is ever full of damage, your ship is destroyed. In Embers of a Forsaken Star, when your ship is destroyed, you no longer lose a turn when respawning. Simply respawn on your next turn and add damage to your ship depending on your ship's tier. There are four new mission types. Lawful Cargo Missions, Lawful Private Eye Missions, Outlaw Arms Dealer Missions, and Outlaw Coerce Missions. When you go on a mission space, draw the top three cards and place them face down nearby. When your turn ends, you may look through the mission cards and choose one to keep. Mods are new small outfits that grant your ship special abilities, like GTS, which adds two movement to each of your engine's die rolls, not to exceed the engine's maximum value. Some mods must be installed onto one of the use space on your outfits, while others must be placed into your cargo hold. Players can also install a cargo pod onto their ship to increase their cargo hold space, or armor plating to increase their ship's durability. But beware, if the connection space on your cargo pod is damaged, all contents of the pod are lost and unusable until it's repaired. When playing with the Embers of a Forsaken Star expansion, players may choose to add as many of these new modules to the game as they'd like. Play continues until the status phase where one player moves their marker onto the victory point space. That player wins the game. Ready to play? Place the near tile in the middle of the table. Shuffle the sector tiles and place one tile with a spawn point for each player in the center of the table, lining up and matching the edge symbols to near. Replace the original game's exploration tokens with the new ones. Shuffle those and the relic tokens face down and place them nearby. Place exploration tokens onto each exploration space. Shuffle the mission, title, event, and NPC cards and place them near the board, giving an NPC card and its matching miniature to each player. Place the kiln's miniature onto the near tile and place its card nearby. Place the cargo cubes, damage markers, credits, and dice nearby. Replace the original game's fame point track with the new one. Place it and the economy board nearby. Roll a d6 for each cube type and place that many matching cubes into each section. Separate the three tiers of ship mats and cards. Each player rolls the d20. Then, starting with the highest roller, each player chooses a tier 1 ship mat, matching miniature and ability card, followed by the next player counterclockwise, and so on. Players place their ships onto the spawn point closest to them. Each player takes 4000 credits and a new how to win card then places an impulse token, yellow side up, here on their mat. Next, place the markers on the zero on the fame point track, the highest number on their energy meter, and the rest onto the armed section. In counterclockwise order, starting with the highest roller as before, each player now spends credits to purchase outfits and mods to fit into their hold. The player who picked their ship last goes first. If you liked Zaya, Embers of a Forsaken Star, you might also like Zaya Missions and Powers, a mini-expansion for Zaya Legends of Adrift system from Far Off Games. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking it and subscribing to the Dice Tower for rules explanations, reviews, and more.